Episode 4, Pharmaceuticals. An acronym that you absolutely must know in order to work in the pharmaceutical industry is API, the active pharmaceutical ingredient. This is the actual drug molecule that is included in medicines and medications. For example, ibuprofen is a popular pain-relieving API, and it's sold under several brand names, including Advil. Looking at the molecular formula, you can see that it's a relatively large and unusual molecule, and I'm sure some lay people are glad that we call it ibuprofen instead of its chemical name, which is isobutyl phenylpropionic acid. Many APIs are similarly clunky molecules and cannot be found anywhere naturally occurring. This means that these molecules must be made by a series of chemical reactions. While a chemist would likely develop the reaction pathway and the reaction mechanism, it is the chemical engineer's job to scale the process up to a commercial scale. As a side note, if you're interested in developing reaction pathways, you can still do this as a chemical engineer if you wish, in a research and development, or R&D, role. Let's look at some other examples of APIs. I just reintroduced Advil as ibuprofen. Another API for pain relief is acetaminophen, more commonly known under the brand name Tylenol. Also, there is naproxen, which is sold as Aleve. Yet a fourth non-steroidal anti-inflammatory is acetyl salicylic acid, or aspirin. These names are all very fun to say, by the way, once you know how to pronounce them. Loridadine is the API in Claritin, and it is one of my personal favorite APIs because it is the only way that I can remain functional throughout allergy season living in Florida. Alprazolam is the API in Xanax. What I find fascinating by looking at all these pharmaceutical molecules is that it isn't immediately obvious by looking at the molecules what these medicines are supposed to do. For example, comparing alprazolam and loridadine, they are both complex looking molecules primarily composed of carbon and hydrogen atoms, with maybe a few nitrogen and oxygen atoms thrown in there as well. Why is it that one of them is good at treating severe anxiety and the other is good at treating symptoms of allergies? Even more fascinating still is that stereochemistry is critical. For those who haven't taken organic chemistry yet, or who are taking orgo right now, stereochemistry refers to the three-dimensional orientation of the molecule. Although the molecular formula is the exact same, the shape of the molecule can affect how it works. A famous example here is again ibuprofen. Only the S enantiomer is active in the body. The R enantiomer doesn't do anything, but your body has a mechanism to convert it to S. As the chemical engineer, this may be a problem that you can solve. A product that contains more s ibuprofen is likely of a higher quality. Each API has a distinct effect on the human body, and in some cases, a different effect in different individuals. Another critical variable is the API concentration within the body. It must be high enough to be effective, but any foreign molecule can become quite dangerous if it's in too high of a dose. A pharmaceutical engineer must have a strong understanding of how the drug concentration varies in the human body throughout time. All medicines have a lag time from the time it is ingested or injected to the time that it actually gets absorbed into your system. Then your body's natural metabolism begins working to break it down or it leaves your body through the excretory system. Interestingly, this graph doesn't look so different from the graphs you'll see in your reactions kinetics class. Pharmacokinetics is a subfield that deals with reaction rates of pharmaceuticals, and I encourage you to seek an elective course on the topic if this is something that interests you. Yet another area where chemical engineers can apply their knowledge in this space is that of targeted drug delivery. When I was in college, I had an undergraduate research project in this area for a few semesters. The idea here is that blood flowing through a bloodstream is not that much different from fluid flowing through a pipe. The same principles of fluid dynamics apply. With this knowledge, chemical engineers can design drug-carrying particles to move towards the sides of your arteries where they are likely to encounter the inflamed endothelial cells where the drugs are needed the most. Many chemical engineers choose to work in the manufacturing side of the pharmaceutical industry. Just like any other chemical process, it is best visualized by looking at a process flow diagram. The whole process involves the mass production of APIs and the subsequent loading into capsules or forming of tablets. For producing tablets, the API is produced in powder form and then pressed together after moisturizing them with binder droplets, kind of like how wet stands sticks together in a sandcastle. Speaking of capsules and tablets, these are some of the two more, most common forms of pills. Can you think of advantages and disadvantages of both? For capsules, you can also load them with liquid APIs too, which tend to absorb faster in the body and therefore relieve your pain faster. You can also more easily design drug cocktails in the same pill. 
Tablets, on the other hand, are cheaper to produce and also allow the patient to split the dose. However, a downside of the tablet is that they taste and smell absolutely nasty. Rather, they would if chemical engineers hadn't come in to save the day yet again. One of the last parts of the manufacturing process is the spray coating of tablets with a sugar solution. This masks the taste of the API as it's swallowed. Engineers design the spray coaters that make this happen, and also they need to understand how mixing mechanisms and the time in the spray coater affect the thickness of the spray coated film. As a final note, I wanted to mention again that process safety is critical in every field of chemical engineering, but perhaps even more so in the pharmaceutical industry. Consider this, dosages of many drugs are a gram or less, sometimes even on the milligram scale. Yet at the commercial scale, engineers are making batches of drugs hundreds of kilograms at a time. Personal safety is critical here as you need to make sure that employees that are around all these active pharmaceutical ingredients aren't accidentally ingesting or inhaling the API. In addition to safety for the employees, the engineer must consider the safety of the patients. A frequent guideline in engineering in general is the 10% rule, which says that any calculation an engineer performs should be within 10% of the true value. However, when manufacturing pharmaceuticals, engineers must be more accurate. To this end, they need an understanding of statistics in order to develop quality control protocols. Some companies in the pharmaceutical space include Pfizer, Roche, Johnson & Johnson, Merck, Amgen, and Eli Lilly, among many others. There are tons of small biotech companies in this space as well, all looking to hire chemical engineers. That concludes this episode. Thanks for watching.